good morning or perhaps good afternoon or good evening if you're watching this later online. Uh, welcome here to the webinar series of Teams as a platform. We're doing themes, th things with Teams that you've never done before or perhaps that you'll be doing from now on into the future. So my name is Jos Verlinde. Uh, I'm a partner technical architect here by, with Microsoft in the Netherlands. Um, but as in everything with Teams, right, I can't do it by myself. So today I, I'm here, joined here by Dave. Hello, my name is Dave Verlier and I'm a portfolio manager at Inspark. My name is Thijs Soepenberg. I'm a Power Platform Consultant uh, also at Inspark. So I'll talk you through the intro, right? Uh, so today and later on, Dave and Thijs will actually bring you most of the content. So if you run into questions, right, or if you want us to expand on certain topics, feel free to use the ask a question uh, option that you have in uh, if you're watching uh, this now. Uh, to post in any questions or on clarities that, that, that there might be, right? Or if you want more information. Um, not only uh, we have uh, Dave and Thijs here, right? But there are other colleagues from Inspark that are answering Q&A in the chat. So go as deep as you want or need to, and they'll, we'll try and uh, find the answers to your questions. And where needed, we'll bring it live here in the, into the conversation. Um, so what we've seen is that the workplace is changing, right? So we can go into all the figures and all the details, right? But if we look at the reality is that we went from a workplace that was working in the office to working at home. And that means that there is a lot of time, uh, the, the things that are slightly different, right? So we are losing something like 20% of our time in, in hunting down information that we need, right? Or perhaps in 60% of the time, there is information uh, that, that is missed, right? So what can we do to make that better? So what if we had a workplace where we had a different options, right? Where we can uh, get uh, uh, the processes that we're working with, right? The real business processes, right? Not the, in, 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 in the, the things that need to be done, right? Or the emails or, or but the really task uh, or, or business oriented processes, if we can get them right into teams so that I can act on it or better yet, that I don't have to act on it, that there is already automation that takes care of the mundane tasks, right? Or the things that I'm liable to forget, right? To log every call that comes in or to, 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 to note down every time, right? Uh, how much time I spend on the specific uh, agenda point. Um, so, uh, and that's all nice, right? If you can bring that together for the Microsoft apps, that's kind of what you expect from Microsoft. But your business doesn't run on Microsoft alone, right? There's well, the high likelihood that you'll be integrating it with other applications or other vendors. So how can you bring them in as well? And then I think the most important part of all is, is about communication. I as a person really can't uh, come into my full, uh, full abilities if I can work with others and if I can communicate with them and collaborate, work together. And yes, so we have a bunch of tools for that. So Teams clearly is a big part of that but it doesn't stop at Teams. So this is Teams as a platform. So the platform can be Power Apps, right, which help you build applications quickly, rapidly, uh, but still reliably and very beautiful. Uh, Power Automate, which helps you uh, uh, create workflows, right? And it would be nice if we can use that to automate some of those mundane tasks. If you want to create a bot, clearly, right? The Power Virtual Agent might just be the way where you can start building those things without needing to have great expertise. Well, probably you, you have great expertise, but it might be more in the business side than on the technical side. So here you can use your business abilities in order to build something that is can be leveraged by others. And yes, if you are a true coder, right? If you are a developer or, or soft, independent, independent software vendor, yes, you can also build on, uh, on, on, on the Teams platform. We saw examples of that yesterday with Ask Roger, but now we're looking more on the Power App side where Inspark has specific capabilities. And then we're talking about the tools, right? But it's not just about the tools, right? It's really about how do we do that? So let's try and talk about that a little bit more uh, later on, on how that, that is done, right? And, and just in case that you were not yet aware, right? So we used to have a Teams application called uh, the, 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 to pin a, a SharePoint page. Last week we introduced FIFA, right? FIFA Connection, right? And the interesting part is FIFA Connections is, is launched yesterday, 
yeah, if we look, take a look, right, it's already being used, right? I, I think in Spark, right? In, in Spark, you use this, Dave? Yes, uh, that's correct, uh, Jules. Thank you very much. Uh, what what you're looking at actually is is our internet uh, homepage. Uh, usually, we we uh, connect to it uh, via SharePoint or via, via the browser, but we now have access to it uh, actually via Teams. So, uh, I, apologies for the fact that it is in Dutch, but I think you'll you'll get the message. Oh, it's part um, of a Dutch company, isn't it? It is it, obviously, but uh, we, we we speak English as well, <laughs> fortunately. But this is a, a good example how um, uh, end users, our, our colleagues, can actually choose how to access uh, corporate information and have access to tools that, uh, that are relevant uh, to you as a person. For instance, your employee self-service is access, uh, accessible here and we have uh, made an integration with, with AFOS, which is uh, an HR uh, backend system. So you see tasks in AFOS uh, actually uh, in, 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 the, in the pink part um, so with a single sign-on, you can actually click uh, through it and, and, and access the, the Avos application. So that, that's a, a good uh, example of how, uh, how the integration uh, has, has been set. You uh, mentioned talking about it. Uh, what we want to do actually is show you how it's, uh, it's being integrated. Um, later on, Thijs will uh, demonstrate three actual use cases that are actually quite low level and, and easy for you to roll out and, and experiment uh, with. Um, we feel that uh, the combination of Teams and the Power Platform is an, actually a great combina combination for, for a central hub for collaboration and um, yeah, supporting working processes. The question we get asked a lot is, is, is where to start. And um, at, if we look at our at use cases we do with, uh, with actual customers, we can categorize it in, in three um, stages. And you see them to the, to the right here. Uh, the first one being accelerating tasks. So simple mundane tasks, as you mentioned them, um, often um, within the, the Office 365 platform, that can easy, been easily uh, being automated and to, to increase productivity. And often we see Excel or uh, maybe SharePoint being used as a, as a data source uh, due to license costs. So that's uh, quite easy to establish and um, often used for a, a part of uh, the organization, for instance, a specific team. Adding a little bit more complexity, um, we come to improving processes. So often uh, processes that are being uh, used within the organization, primary processes that are actually important to the organization, uh, which can be uh, uh, yeah, supported better by using uh, Power Apps and, and Power Automate. Um, often we use data first there as, uh, as the data source. Um, and uh, often also uh, teams, uh, uh, data for, for teams, that should say. Uh, the last one being uh, digital transformation. Um, these are often uh, uh, more extensive programs where we uh, play a part in with uh, the Power Platform. Um, often more mission critical and uh, they require often uh, a governance, uh, maintenance and, and support. So, you have to uh, have a strategy uh, for that in place. So Dave, you describe that these complexities are from, from very simple to, to large, more complex processes. Is that also a logical order that you use with your customers or that you find that your customers use? Yeah, well, th thank you for, for asking that. That brings me to my next uh, slide, actually. What we see here is uh, on, the, on the left axis, the, the business amp impact from being low to, to high and the effort uh, and complexity of building those solutions. Um, and the, the, the best thing is to start uh, with accel accelerating tasks because uh, then you have first successes, you have some visibility within uh, the organization. Often you don't have to uh, build those processes or successes for the entire organization, but just for teams. So it's pretty low level and you can then extend that to, uh, to the quick wins that often uh, impact uh, the entire organization or a, a bigger uh, end user part. Uh, and with that being established, you can then leverage that to, to digital transformation processes 
and actually extensively using and making use of, uh, of the capabilities within the Power Platform. And that's a logical way to move to, uh, to, to substantiate uh, how uh, the Power Platform can be used uh, within your entire Microsoft uh, ecosystem. I can back that up with some uh, real life examples. Um, I have three uh, uh, here, uh, one being uh, the provisioning of Teams. That's actually an, an app we uh, have uh, leveraged for multiple customers. Um, and uh, the two top uh, examples are uh, customer specific cases, one for Solutiono and one for a customer QA. Both, uh, both are in the Netherlands. Let me just zoom in to uh, uh, get into detail about the uh, specific uh, examples. The first one being uh, provisioning team sites. Uh, provisioning is actually um, uh, the mechanism to provide end users a wizard to request a team or a team site. Um, the, the, the big advantage of this being that you unburden your own IT organization. You don't have to do things manually. Uh, templates are being included. So for instance, if you want to start up a project, you can actually uh, select the project template and all configuration and policies will be uh, executed automatically. So that's in, from a compliance perspective also uh, a, a good way to go. Leads to standardization and predictability, which increases the, the usability, right? And people know where to go to find stuff. Yeah, for sure. And um, the good thing about this is that it's a, a, a SaaS application. So we use a central engine uh, to push uh, all the, uh, all the, all the uh, team site creation. Um, but it also allows us to uh, go with the Microsoft roadmap and push updates so you're, that you always have a relevant tool that is up to date with the latest uh, features. Because that's what Teams regularly does, right? We add new features continuously, right? Yeah. Uh, based on, on customer requests, right? And then you guys make sure that's implemented in the back end so that your customers can just use it. Correct, yeah. And then uh, aside from being uh, updated regularly, it's also being monitored. So um, uh, requests that may or may not um, end up uh, 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 being properly provisioned, uh, our help desk automatically sees that and, and provide, uh, pro can provide the remediation on that. So um, yeah, in all, a, a great solution that, uh, that anyone can, uh, can use. Just moving back to, uh, to the, the grid we saw earlier, um, I'm moving on to, uh, to the next one, which is improving processes. This is an example of our customer uh, Solutional, which is a small auditing firm. And they uh, actually uh, yeah, start up uh, uh, and, and, and register, execute and file engagements, including audits. So they are the in intermediate, uh, intermediary between their clients and the uh, um, auditing facilities. Okay. That, yeah. Um, so in the past, what I did, it was a very manual process, uh, making use of file shares and, and emails and, and Excel files. And now we have fully automated that. Um, so what, what we import the, the documents from the clients and then a risk, risk framework is, is being uh, uh, kicked off uh, automatically uh, with all types of uh, actions. So we have a full uh, 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 life cycle and an auditing process which is being documented. And the end result of it is, is, is being documented in uh, Microsoft Teams. So that's the link from the Power Platform to actually Teams. So the auditor uses a Power App to, to do their work because that's yep. the best work environment. And then the end results are surfaced through Teams. Yeah, that's correct. What you see here in the screens is actually the, the Power Platform interface. Okay. Yeah. So I'm zooming out again and uh, zooming to the zoom into the last one, which is digital transformation, um, and that's in uh, a case uh, by uh, by Kiva, whatever we did for Kiva. Kiva is actually uh, one of the top 20 in the world when it comes to testing, inspecting, and and certif certifying um, uh, certain types of assets. Um, and what we did there is that uh, we provided them with a, a, a portal foundation, making use of uh, 
uh, a unified logging experience um, so they can have uh, a better interaction, digital interaction with their uh, customers. Um, and via that portal, they can actually have access to uh, certification and audits uh, information via other portals and also inspections. So that's that's a, a, a great way uh, to interact with customers. We use uh, uh, Power Apps Portal functionality for it in, in basics. Um, but there's also a link with Teams because they can actually schedule appointments making use of virtual agents, which are then uh, uh, deployed to Teams. So inspectors from Kiwa actually see uh, the, uh, the, the appointments being made. So here it all comes together and you see the integration of the, uh, of the Microsoft stack. Zooming out, uh, we're back to the grid again. Um, and I actually want to hand over to Thijs who will run us through three actual uh, demos. Uh, one uh, from the category uh, Accelerating Tasks, which is the, the Milestone app, which is actually uh, available via Teams. And the other two are from uh, Improving Processes. So uh, the Procedures Approval app, making use of uh, functionality already available by Microsoft, made available by Microsoft, and a Week Start app. And the latter the the letter is uh, is an uh, an app we actually created for our customer Asito, but is available uh, yeah to other customers as well. But you can elaborate on that. Thanks, nice. Dave. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So um, good to keep in mind. Uh, every demo use case I'm going to show you is based on Microsoft 365. Uh, seeded license. Uh, so if you have, for instance, uh, E3 or E1 licensing uh, available to your end users, then you can implement uh, all the functionality which I'm going to show you uh, in a few minutes. So I think it's good to, good to say that. And that's also the focus of our, our, our demos. Uh, it's, it's really for everyone to use, uh, especially with, uh, with the end user in mind, the citizen developer in mind. They call it in, uh, in the Power Platform. Uh, but especially also with, uh, with, with support from IT, of course, and to, uh, to, to, to really guide the end user in governance and have a stable platform um, as well. So um, yeah, let's, let's go to the first uh, scenario. The first scenario is about the Milestone app, uh, which is um, basically a standard low-code, no-code application, which is available in Dataverse for Teams. And uh, there are a lot more, which I'm going to uh, pinpoint really uh, uh, short as well. Uh, but the idea of the milestone app is, um, let's say you have a team of, 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 of users that work together, that collaborate. Uh, for instance, an HR team or a financial uh, team that they are doing small projects in, in, in the field. And uh, they, they, those small projects should be uh, facilitated by a digital tool. And of course, we, we all know the ecosystem of Microsoft does offer a lot of tooling uh, to support that. Uh, but one of those tools is, I think, a really nice tool is the, the Milestone app, uh, which I want to demo, uh, which I want to demo in the demo environment for you. So the steps I'm going to show you is, uh, first step is how, how can you add out of the box uh, 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 template apps, uh, which is Microsoft, uh, with Microsoft supports and delivers to the platform. That's step one. The, the, sec the second step I'm going to show you is, uh, how, how does this app actually work? So what kind of functionality can you expect from that app? Uh, and, and what is out of the box uh, uh, available? And the third uh, step is uh, I'm going to show you how to expand this specific app since you have specific needs. Uh, I mean, each company is a little bit different. And uh, yeah, since you may want to change the, the functionality of the app, I'm going to show you how you can do that. Uh, and the last step is actually new functionality with which Microsoft uh, allows you to share a, a app uh, outside of your team. So those are the four uh, main functionalities, main use cases I will going to, to show you. So I want to switch to my demo environment uh, uh, right now. So, okay, welcome to my demo environment. Uh, we're now actually uh, logged in into the, to the Microsoft Teams uh, full client application. And uh, we see on the left side, uh, I have a couple of teams uh, provisioned already uh, for the demo up front. And uh, all of these teams have unique functionalities, which I'm going to show you uh, in my demo. Uh, the first step uh, is, is actually, uh, let's say I have this team HR. 
the HR team does work on all kinds of different uh, projects and they want to support that with a with a app. So the first step uh, this HR team uh, is, is going through is actually click on uh, on the on the the, uh, the team's reel and find the uh, Power Apps functionality, which is actually really cool. That's the place to be. Uh, click on your uh, on your reel, uh, find uh, uh, Power Apps. You can also type in uh, Power Apps and then um, the Power App app opens um, and to give you uh, a small tip uh, you can also pin this on the on your reel so it's always visible uh, when you next time visit the team's environment as well so when we are in this environment uh, logged in uh, there are basically two things you can you can do uh, the first step is start from scratch so you can build a whole new app yourself uh, with specific business requirements uh, uh, you have uh, and the second step is make use of an existing template why start new if you can already use exactly. someone else's? Exactly, yeah. So uh, there are a couple of templates available. At the moment there are five, but I expect more to come in the future. Um, and uh, now to give you a small insight on the type of apps that are available, I'm going to uh, start with the first one, uh, which is employee ideas, what is, which, which is an e extremely helpful app when you have, for instance, a organizational wide team. So let's say you're uh, a company with maybe 500 people working there, and uh, you have a corporate um, uh, uh, organization-wide Microsoft team available. And all, all those uh, great minds in your organization, they have really good ideas. And you want to gather those ideas and improve the, basically the company uh, you are working for and yeah, uh, canalize those ideas into one place. So then the employee idea app comes in, in real handy and uh, yeah, you can just install that into your organizational-wide team. So something to look into. Uh, there are some other apps also available, like uh, an issue reporting app. Uh, the one I'm going to show you today is the Milestone app. Uh, and this Milestone app is located here, which I'm going to add to my team. So um, when I click on that specific app, I get a small description of the functionalities in the app. Uh, and this is actually saying, oh, it allows me to uh, efficiently track uh, 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 tasks in, in, in the specific project. So you know what you're getting. You yep. know what we're getting, of course, yeah. Uh, uh, so we add that to our team. So that's the second step. Uh, now I'm, yeah, uh, a search bar pops up and I'm able to find my team. Now, for instance, I want to add that to a specific team called uh, the HR team, and I'm able to select, to select also channels. So if I have, I have multiple channels in my team, uh, then I'm also uh, able to pinpoint in it to uh, select a channel. So Thijs, can I see all teams, right? Or just the teams that I'm a member of, or how does it work? Good good question. Uh, of course, this, this, this Teams environment is really secure, and it's called in the technical term uh, security trimmed. So you're only seeing what you're, what you're a member of in okay. the first place, yeah. So of course, uh, yeah, there could be really delicate stuff in the, in the Teams environment. It's all very good secured, and you're only uh, finding the teams you are a member or, or a owner of a okay. specific team. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to select the HR team. And since I already set this up, I will skip this step. But normally I would, uh, would select set up a tab. And then it's uh, yeah provisioning basically all the functionalities that are part of the app uh, into that specific team. And that's also uh, good to know. Uh, all these apps are in context of a specific team. So when I add the, uh, this specific app, it's only for HR, and HR remains owner of the specific data in that app. So there's data behind the team, and that's locked down to the same members and owners that you just mentioned. Exactly. For the for the IT people, uh, at the same time when I push this button, a Power Platform environment, separate environment, is provisioned uh, in the in, in the in the Power Platform environment, and it's tied to to that specific team. Okay. That holds holds it all together. So from a governance perspective, yeah, that's also you should think of uh, of a strategy for that. Eh? I mean, uh, with all the end users in the company just provisioning all kinds of uh, apps and, and, and environments, yeah, you have yeah. to think of that uh, real well, of course. But for an end user, it's great. Eh? I can just uh, create an app, uh, add that add to my team. And uh, now we're back in the uh, in the Teams overview. I select my HR team and now I get an extra tab which is called uh, by default milestones, but I changed uh, the tab name to projects. It's a little bit more uh, friendly. And um, at the moment I'm logged in in that app and I see on the left side of my app, 
I see all kinds of different uh, projects which are already, already uh, filled in some and uh, add some tasks uh, to it. Actually, they are working on two projects at the moment. They have employee self-service working on and also they're, bu they're building an app for, uh, for employees to onboard. So when you join a company, they want to have a really nice experience for, for the new uh, newcomers in the company and yeah, guide them through, through the process of onboarding. So at the moment I selected this specific project and uh, this project holds a lot of uh, tasks. You see here, these are all my tasks uh, which, which I can pop up open, uh, assign a p uh, some persons to a, a tasks and track really the tasks uh, very good, very well. And on top of my tasks, there's also some kind of uh, yeah, milestone bar which says, okay, these are my deadlines, my main deadlines. And uh, there I'll start working on a minimal viable product here. And uh, uh, especially uh, there are three tasks assigned, aligned to that specific um, milestone, uh, which is the, yeah, these three. I can also short these tasks uh, so I can also see which ta uh, tasks are belonging to that milestone. So there's one ready, there's one in progress, and there's one new. Let's say I'm going to uh, work on this tasks uh, and I, uh, no, I finish this task so I can change mm -hmm. the status. Set it to uh, set it to ready, uh, and then you will see that this percentage is uh, is changing. So uh, two of the three tasks are already. Uh, so I know uh, if I'm the project manager of this small project, uh, then I know uh, where we are in project. So I think it's really, yeah, fast experience. Uh, you just add the app to uh, to the team, uh, create some projects, add some tasks uh, to it, and you're good to go. Okay. So let's say. Um, I want to tweak the app a little bit. Uh, I want to change the app a little bit. I started from a template, but I can change that template as well. Um, how I'm going to do that is, um, is, is, is a, um, how I'm going, going to show you how to do that. The first step is move back to the Power Apps app, which is now pinned to your Microsoft Teams wheel. And uh, of course, I started here from uh, from a template, uh, which I'm going to do that. Uh, uh, don't do not do that now. I'm going to go to the build tab, which is going to give me an overview of all the apps installed already. So at the moment, I see the HR team can go to installed apps, and there I see my milestone app, which I uh, yeah, which I showed you uh, a few minutes ago. I can click on the see all button, and then I uh, get an overview of all the functionality that is inside this specific app. And there can be multiple functionalities in data first for teams. Uh, you can build uh, chatbots, uh, you can build uh, power automate workflows, you can build canvas apps, but you can also uh, work with tables to store your data in. And when we look at the, uh, the, the solution at the moment, we see a lot of tables here. So let's say for uh, uh, tracking the milestones, for keeping the activity in the app, all kinds of uh, uh, data stored here. Uh, and I see the, the canvas app here, which I see in the, in the type column. This is my Canvas app, and if I want to, I can change the user experience of that app as well. And you can do the same, I think, for the databases, right? So Absolutely. if you want to add a column yeah. to have some additional data that yeah. you want to capture for HR. For instance, yeah, I okay. can do that as well, yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, how to do that uh, is just click on ellipsis and then uh, click on the edit button, and then you will open up the Power Platform Studio. Uh, to work on the, on the Canvas app. Which is the editor for Canvas apps. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And Thijs, can anyone just do this or is this restricted? Uh, no, you, no, it's restricted. Uh, you, can, you can set roles for a specific app. Uh, so you can uh, define who are the editors, uh, who, who can access the, the data in the app. So all kinds of roles you can, uh, you can set up. Yeah. And that brings, uh, especially brings me to the next uh, uh, topic. Uh, there's a new functionality added to Dataverse for Teams which allows me to share this specific app as well with a larger group of people. So let's say I'm starting to work with marketing or with, uh, with management team uh, also okay. on this app. Uh, then I can press the share button and then uh, that gives me the opportunity to share this specific app with a larger group of people. So let's say I want to share this app with management team. Then I can just uh, again uh, find the right team and share this specific, uh, spare the, share this specific app. Okay. And what's, what's really important here is the HR will always stay owner of that specific data because the app is in the team's environment of the HR team. Uh, this will only give access to the management team to this specific data in, in, in the HR team. Yeah, so, so the data will stay in the HR team, absolutely. but they can access the application to yeah. work with the data so that they can do their tasks, right? Or, yeah. or update 
correct. In this case. Yeah, yeah. So the management team will get an extra tap as well, projects, which leads to the to the HR project. Okay. Yeah, yeah clear. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, now I want to switch back to my uh, to my slides again. Uh, uh, what, what you've seen is uh, now the technology is data for, uh, for teams, uh, which really allows you to, to, to enhance the capabilities inside your team. Uh, for instance, I have a specific need, uh, HR team has a specific need, and I want to, uh, to find an app for that. Uh, just browse the catalog, see what's available, uh, add it to the team, and if not available, you can even start from, uh, from scratch, uh, which is uh, yeah, which takes some practice, of course, uh, the first time you do that. But uh, yeah, it's it's also possible if you want to. So uh, when we move back to when we go forward to the next uh, to the next scenario, uh, which is the uh, the, the the approval uh, um, scenario, uh, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, but first, I want to start you uh, to start with a quick video uh, to see. What kind From of, project uh, proposals to client agreements, you need these requests approved. Approvals in Microsoft Teams is your hub to request, view, and manage all your approvals, including ones from SharePoint, Power Automate, Microsoft Dynamics 365, and more. In Teams, go to Approvals and select New Approval Request. Add details, then send it out. Approvers can sign off on a request right from a chat. Whether you need a client discount, an expense report, or a vacation request approved. Manage it all with approvals and teams. All right, so uh, what we've just seen is new functionality which Microsoft offers also uh, within Microsoft Teams. And it's uh, actually an, a modern approval center where you're able as an end user to, uh, yeah, to, to, to review uh, tasks, to approve uh, certain tasks uh, that come from different systems as well. So this is really a hub for for, for, for the person to have uh, yeah, a hook for, for teamwork, a hook for processes as well. I mean, all the tasks come to one central place from your ERP system, uh, from SAP maybe, maybe from Dynamics also. Yeah. Uh, and also there can be different processes involved like uh, budget approval processes or uh, specific HR uh, processes. You can all bring them to one, to one central place. So, um, in my demo, I want to um, to start with a with a with a new approval process, start an approval up. Uh, I want to show you how you can add this a new approval center to uh, to Teams. Uh, and in the third third step, I want to show you how to work with that uh, approval center. Uh, and in the last step, I want to show you when I approve something, it's also going back to the to the place I started the approval from. So uh, it's a, it's a really a chain of uh, the whole chain of the process I'm going to to show you. But when I switch back to my uh, to my demo environment, and uh, I will go to uh, Teams again, and uh, I will go to uh, Team Lean now. Uh, team Lean is a, a a certain project team that works a lot on procedures. They work on all kinds of procedures for the company, like uh, onboarding processes, financial processes, HR processes. They really are in place to streamline certain uh, processes. Um, let me uh, show you, they have a specific channel for procedures here and uh, they are working especially from the documents tab. I'm going to try to zoom in a bit so it's better readable. Uh, what you see here is a list of, uh, of all the documents they are working on, uh, all the procedures they're working on. And especially this is a document library which I added uh, to the Microsoft team environment. So they have a separate SharePoint document library they're working in. I attach this to the team uh, as a tab, and they now can start working on, on their documents. For this specific procedure, it's called uh, a leave request procedure they're working on, and it's uh, it has a stage uh, that's not approved yet. Uh, you see here from other documents that it's already approved or rejected, uh, which is also uh, added via a SharePoint conditional formatting functionality in the in the list. So I think it's also really cool uh, uh, to use in combination with Teams. SharePoint conditional formatting in Teams. In right? Teams, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we all, all combine all kinds of technology uh, when we work uh, on a specific project like this. Um, so let's let's say I want to start a, a specific approval process for uh, for the leave request I, I just created. And um, I'm going to uh, to use this button to, to start off this uh, approval process. And actually what you notice is you open a Power Canvas app 
And this is uh, actually a functionality that lives outside of Teams, uh, but it's actually very deep integrated within Teams. Uh, and from our uh, personal experience as, 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 as a consultant at Inspark, I see a lot of approval processes in, in, in the world. I mean, different companies, they have all kinds of approval processes and they're actually really similar. Uh, it's, it's going to a group of people. Uh, sometimes one, one of, of the people has to approve, sometimes the whole group has to approve, but it's, it's uh, all the time very similar, only the route of, 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 the, of the process is a little, a little bit different. So what we what we thought of within uh, within Inspark is why not create an accelerator for approval, modern approval, and bring it into a Power Apps Canvas app and uh, yeah start off any approval uh, you want to. So this gives us uh, the the leverage to implement uh, a new kind of approval process really fast uh, for a specific business case we uh, we uh, we see in the company. At the moment, I started off uh, an approval form, and this approval form is predefined. So you're looking at a template because for procedure approval, there are always two people that needs to approve. There's uh, Django and there's my line. They always need to need to approve and it's pre-filled. But at the moment for de demo pur purposes, I'm able to change the uh, approval process, which I can add more approval steps to it. So let's say I want to have four, four persons that need to approve. But for, for now, uh, I stick to one, uh, which is easier to demo, otherwise I have to move through each person in the in the chain, which takes uh, more time. So I will add my own demo account here, uh, which is the, the first state is, is, is review. And I can say, um, uh, please uh, review my uh, leave request um, document. Uh, I can also choose to to add more people in, in CC there, so they get notified when some, something has approved uh, also. And then I can start off the process which is now kicking off a Power Automate workflow in, in the backend and uh, which starts a modern approval uh, and uh, yeah, sends basically the approval task to me as a person, as a demo user of this specific uh, uh, demo. So when I move back to Teams, I can also see now that the status of the leave request procedure is updated to running. And in a, mo in a minute, it will also present me the actor that is involved. Okay. So, um, this has sent me an approval task to my modern approval center within Teams, which I'm going to show you as well. So let's open up the approval uh, functionality. Again, move to my uh, Teams uh, reel, then uh, find the approval uh, app and then add it to my, uh, to my environment. And again, I want to pin that, of course, to my, uh, to my reel so I can find it easy the next time. Uh, and we see some uh, approvals popping up here. I can see uh, some uh, historic approvals that uh, went through, uh, some things were approved, uh, some, some are still uh, uh, requested. Uh, and I see some approval details which, which you're able to change in the process. You can add specific details if you want to. I see a link to the specific uh, policy which I can open up to see if I want to approve or reject uh, that specific uh, request. And I can see the actors that are, uh, take part in this, uh, that, that are taking part in this uh, approval process. So imagine that uh, somewhere in an SAP system or a dynamic system, this approval starts off, uh, automatically kicks off, maybe maybe uh, some kind of triggers are, uh, are involved, um, presents it back into Teams, deep integration into Teams, and uh, this person that has to approve uh, does, doesn't even have to move from, 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 from Teams to a different system. Uh, they can all approve it from, from, from within here. And even get, gets even better when you have the mobile app installed, the Teams app, you can then approve and, and reject or uh, review that from So, from so you have basically client. one user interface for all your Absolutely. processes yeah. and actions, yeah. right? Um, a question from the audience. Um, uh, someone is wondering whether this is the standard approval app, whether there's customization involved, right? So how did, uh, how, can you perhaps explain a little bit how, how you put this together? Uh, so, so, so we use three technologies. Uh, basically, the first one to kick off the, the approval was a, a Power App Canvas app. Uh, this Power App Canvas app sends a request to a uh, Power Automate uh, flow, uh, which triggers. So off. these are the two custom components that you guys added. Custom, low code, no code components, of yeah. course. Eh? It's not custom development at all. Uh, anyone can can configure that based on templates. Uh, and the last step is then this modern approval, uh, which is triggered off by the Power Automate workflow 
uh, combines and integrates in the uh, in this specific approval center, which is a standard component. Which is 100% standard component. Uh, yeah, yeah. And available without any licensing. Uh, available within your st your standard team's yeah, license. Correct. Yeah. 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 So uh, yeah, you can imagine, of course, when there's a new uh, request, I can uh, also approve or reject. So let's say this is uh, this is okay. I'm with that, and then approve my um, approve my uh, uh, policy or procedure. So submitting my response, uh, the workflow is picking that up. And then um, in the end, uh, yeah, you can imagine the status will be updated as well in the specific library that is uh, uh, where the workflow is triggered. I can see now as the running, but in the end it will get the status uh, completed. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that was my demo about uh, the, the modern approval uh, in combination with Microsoft Teams. When we switch back to the to the slides again, um, yeah, so, some 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 things to 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 uh, uh, to mention. Uh, this can be combined also with with different systems, uh, as long as you combine it with, uh, for instance, Power Automate uh, technology. Uh, you can trigger off any any type of approval uh, and send it back to the to the source system where you started it from. So, uh, really, really powerful. Uh, functionality uh, out of the box uh, available. Yeah, and I can imagine that if it becomes really, well, let's say uh, data transformational, right? When the truck runs, uh, dock, comes to the loading dock, then perhaps in that, those cases, it takes a little bit longer to develop or you might need additional licenses to have those premium connectors wired up, yeah. right? But if you start small, you can start uh, simpler. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Uh, yeah, then we come to the to the to the final use case, uh, which is a, a weak start app we developed uh, together with a company called uh, Asito. Asito is a facilit facilitator, uh, uh, and they uh, had a uh, a certain process in, in place, uh, which is called uh, the, the 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 weak start process, and they work really uh, well with a, with a lean Six sigma um, uh, methodology. Which means, uh, yeah, only do the the stuff and only run the tasks that are really important uh, uh, to take care, to take care of. And they have every week a phys physical, uh, yeah, a, 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 a meeting uh, where we uh, where they come together and um, stand uh, around a large whiteboard and, and define and start of the week together. So uh, they had a, a standard procedure. It was uh, about half an hour uh, uh, of their day, uh, starting of the week. And uh, since we all know we're in a Corona crisis at the moment, uh, yeah, they asked us to build an app for them uh, to basically bring the physical world uh, to the virtual world. And uh, so what we did is we uh, uh, transformed this whole physical process to a digital process. And we built that in a Power Apps Canvas app with a SharePoint backend. Since there had also uh, E1, E3 licenses, it was available within their license. So we built a Canvas app uh, which I'm going to show you uh, in a minute. Let me move to the next uh, uh, slide. There are two uh, things I want to show you. Uh, the first thing is how to integrate an app that is built inside the Power Platform, uh, dedicated in the Power Platform, not data first for Teams, uh, outside the platform, how to integrate that in Microsoft Teams. Uh, that's the first step. Uh, and then I want to show you also uh, the great capabilities of that uh, app we built. Great. So when we switch back to my uh, to my demo environment, uh, we're going to start off from the from the management team uh, because the management team, of course, have to uh, uh, they, they 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 notice there is an app available and they want to add that to to, to their team and they also want to start uh, working lean to lead by example to lead by example exactly. Uh, um, so uh, the first step they want to do is uh, add a specific tab to the specific team. Uh, and add a tab, it's about uh, a Power App uh, we've built, so they can uh, click on the Power App uh, button. Uh, and then I can try to search this specific app that we built. Uh, and in, 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 in basically all the apps are popping up here that are part of the company, that are shared, shared with the company. So I can build apps, everyone can build app, apps, every citizen developer, uh, which is a little bit handy with Excel and Access can build apps. And they can share, share it with the whole company. This is an app we built. We shared it with the company. It's available. It's called Weak Starts, and we add it to that specific team. 
And which is a little bit uh, unique of this app, it actually knows it's inside a context of, uh, context of Teams. So we built a mechanism which is also uh, standardly available, which uh, allows this app to know he's added to a specific team. So and it's 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 saying here, uh, oh, you get uh, you get uh, to to get this use. Uh, uh, it's the first time you use this app uh, in combination with the team. Do you want to onboard this app? And this allows us to uh, start off a uh, uh, onboarding process for this specific app. So in the background, uh, there's a SharePoint environment with, which is prepared prepared for this specific app. So uh, yeah, all their data is stored uh, securely uh, in a in a in a place. Uh, and structured uh, for this app allowed to work with that data. So at the moment I'm getting a, an empty app uh, and I also uh, use the app within the uh, team lean. So I'm going to switch to my uh, team lean, which uh, already uses this app. Uh, and it's added here as a tab as well. Uh, and the app consists of a agenda. So uh, each time uh, Monday morning, nine o'clock, uh, they're going through this ag uh, agenda and they are uh, going to check off all these specific topics. So let's move uh, to two of the topics I want to uh, show you uh, uh, how they work. Uh, so, and good to mention, uh, they have a couple of minutes for each point on the agenda. Assign the times, right? Exactly, yeah. So the first step is the mood board. And uh, you see immediately that the timer already starts to run. They have five minutes for this specific uh, part of the agenda uh, and they can see and uh, they do a quick round within the team and they ask uh, each other a couple of questions. Uh, who wants to share his mood? Uh, is there something getting in the way? Uh, is there any request for help? So um, now we see a lot of uh, members of the of the team already. I see uh, Dave is not part of the of the list uh, yet. So Dave okay. is joining the team and I'm going to add it uh, add Dave's mood uh, to this specific board. Uh, and uh, Dave, uh, how do you feel uh, today? I'll put on my uh, my happy face. Your happy Thank face. You. Okay, yeah. now let's let's do that. Uh, and this is actually safe, safe to this specific team, also for the next week. So we can see what are the difference uh, of a week ago. Is uh, when somebody has a maybe a little bit uh, hard week, uh, is it better this week, for instance? Yeah. Eh? So you can measure the the, the mood. Uh, so when we, when we move back, to, uh, when we go to the next topic, we get to the help questions. So, uh, and it also says fill in uh, beforehand and the rules were some help questions up front added. So I see uh, Ilse is uh, struggling with some uh, KPIs, how to export them, uh, export them to Excel. So uh, she added the help question uh, as well. Uh, and we stick with, uh, uh, with the concept idea of sticky notes. So uh, they worked within the team a lot with sticky notes, uh, they placed them on the whiteboard, uh, physical whiteboard. Uh, we implemented the same concept uh, in this app as well. So get the, the feeling that it's really uh, from a physical board to a digital board. Uh, and it's, that, that works really, really well for them. Okay. Yeah. Um, the last step in the app is actually to evaluate if we spent too much time or, 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 or did we make it within the, within the uh, 33 minutes of time. Uh, so yeah, they can do it better next time eh? and, and, and the manager of the team can say, OK, we uh, weren't uh, that strict on time. Uh, the next next week we'll do that, uh, do that better. Um, there's a last functionality, uh, last but not least functionality I want to show you uh, as well in the app that is actually has the team's uh, look and feel in the app. So even this app is created outside of the uh, team's environment in the Power Platform, it still has the look and feel of teams, the same uh, uh, font sizes, the same colors, uh, everything looks the same. And to go a step, even a step further with this, I'm able to change, since you all know probably, uh, the settings of my Teams client and set it to dark mode. And what happens is this app uh, with a refresh uh, respects my settings of Teams. So it's really powerful. I think you get uh, the context of Teams also available within your Power App Canvas app, so you can uh, yeah you can play with that and uh, also oh. change the colors based on settings. Which which is great from a user experience perspective. Uh, Absolutely, it, it it presents itself as as being one application. Yeah, while it's actually made up a mashup of of several technologies and applications. Yeah, I think that's really powerful for because an end user doesn't notice it's outside no. of living outside the platform. Correct. somewhere. So, uh, um. Okay, when we switch back to the to the slides again, 
Um, so we really saw a scenario uh, where an app is built outside the platform, integrated in the platform, uh, and because it's outside, uh, because it's built in the full-fledged power platform, IT also has full control on this app because we are also uh, bringing the app further, developing the app further, uh, bringing releases to that specific app. You don't want to bother your end users with problems with the specific app you are building. No, you want to uh, really have a release uh, management uh, strategy also in place. So that's the reason why we also build this specific app in the Power Platform. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so with that said, uh, I want to switch back to uh, to Dave uh, for the next steps. Thank you very much, Thijs. Uh, very, very viable uh, use cases and actually, I think, uh, very uh, easy to use for, for all our viewers as well. And that's actually our invitation to you to actually go out and try those Teams Approval Center and the Milestone app yourself. Uh, they're, they're available within your license probably. So you can actually go out and experiment uh, yourself. Uh, if you're a business user, please consult your uh, IT department. And if you're an uh, IT guy, please uh, try and, and um, get the business up and running with it and, and present them with the opportunity. Um, the Week Start app uh, Thijs just showed you is, is actually uh, an app we, uh, we uh, provide. So um, what we do is we'll make the template available to you uh, for free. Just fill in the, the form and uh, leave your uh, name and, and email address and we'll send it to you uh, included with uh, some, uh, some installation instruction uh, if needed. You can use the uh, QR code that, uh, that's here on the page. Um, the slides will be uh, uh, shared, uh, obviously, uh, maybe tonight somewhere. So if within 24 hours uh, you fill in the form, and we'll make sure you'll get the Week Start app uh, and you can actually roll it out within your own organization. And if by any chance you, you would need some uh, assistance uh, getting it up and running, then uh, Thijs or I will, uh, will be happily available to you to help you out. If you have use cases that are a bit more extensive than the use cases Thijs showed you, then please consider our Power App Kickstart workshop. It's a, it's a one day engagement um, in which we uh, discuss several use cases. We'll, we'll inspire you with some uh, other use cases we already have implemented at, at customers and we'll then do a selection of those. So uh, the, the best, the high, most highly prioritized use case, then we will actually build in the afternoon together with you. So you'll be hands on uh, uh, assisting in building uh, the app yourself. And then we'll have a, a minimum viable product that we can actually build upon or actually release within the organization. Those days often are um, funded by Microsoft, so we have to see if some funding is available so we can uh, provide you with a, a, a Power App Kickstart workshop uh, for free, hopefully. Um, that concludes it from, from our side. Um, Jos. Yes, thanks. I... Thanks both of you for, for a great presentation, wonderful demos, right? So you're absolutely right, right? It's not just talking about things, right? It's actually seeing them and or doing them yourself. Uh, that's what brings the platform to life. So if you want to be aware of what's happening, right? Uh, if you're building something, be aware of what's coming up. Watch the, uh, go to the Teams blog, right? Or the M365 lo uh, blog, because as you saw it, it's not just about Teams, right? Parts of the solution come from SharePoint, from Power Apps, from, from Power Automate. It's using those Lego bricks to build your solution and shape it the way that you need it to be. Um, if you're more into uh, some of that might actually be reach a little bit into the development side as well. So take a look there as well. There's extensive documentation also to build Teams apps in low code, right? So you don't need to be a professional developer. If you're the IT admin, you're obviously already keeping a watch on the, on the message center to be aware of what new functionality will be coming, right? Even for the cases that you're not using the Inspark app to, 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 to provision your sites and you need to be aware to make a change for yourself. If you're an end user or a customer of ours and you see need for additional features or a change to features, please let us know that. Right? The, the route to that is to let it know on user voice 
and then submit your questions uh, there, uh, submit your comments or your, uh, or, or your request for new functionality. So thanks for watching this session, right? If you're, uh, you might be watching this later, then in that case, you already know the, the, the URL, aka the LMS tab sessions, right? There are multiple pages of that. If you get to this URL, you'll get to all the information that, that, that you should be aware of. We have a few more uh, of these, these webcasts to do, right? So there's one uh, later today, uh, another one for tomorrow. Um, I'm assuming that you're watching this in English, right? So use the bottommost URL, aka.ms top webinars underscore uh, en uh, to register for the future ones. Even if you can't make it there in time, then you can, uh, then you'll be sent a link to the recording. So on those recordings, right, and, 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 the, and, and the content itself, that will be made available as soon as possible. Uh, we need a little bit of time to, 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 to do a little bit of redaction. Uh, probably today, at latest tomorrow, it will be available. You'll receive a web, uh, 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 an email with a link to those websites as well. So with that, I think we're done. Um, thanks very much for me, and I think also from Th Th Thijs and Dave. Thank, Thank you very you. much for joining.